Welcome to Revival is Here Again with Apostle Goodhart. God is about to speak directly to you as this message is guaranteed to impact your life. As you listen today, expect that God's Word has been sent in your direction to bring about revival, healing, restoration, and transformation. With faith in your heart and great expectation, join me to receive God's Word through his choice vessel, Apostle Goodhart O. Equeme. Whilst you're still standing very quickly, turn quickly to Psalm 75, verses 6 to 7, very quickly, and James 4, 6 to 10, as we go into the word of God this beautiful morning. Psalm 75, 6 to 7, read together, For promotion cometh neither from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south, but God is judge. He put it down one and set it up another. Once again, for promotion cometh neither from the east nor from the west, nor from the south. But God is the judge. He put it down one and set it up another. All right, James four six to ten. James four six to ten. But he giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resisted the proud. Let's read together. He, uh, he giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resisted the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts. You double-minded, be afflicted, and mourn, and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning, and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. Hallelujah. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. For an assignment this morning, how God lifts in the kingdom. How God lifts in the kingdom. Our Father, thank you for this gathering of believers unto you, on-site, online. We gather unto you again and beseech you, Abba Father, to take a call from the altar of heaven and on the lips of the tongues of clear of your seven sons, that this day I will come to your people. With the thus say of the Lord, move every man, boy, girl, under the sound of my voice from where we are to the place called destiny. We'll vows always to return the praise, the glory, the honor back unto you alone. In Jesus' wondrous name we pray. Somebody shout a big Amen. You may please be seated wonderful in God's presence. How God lived in the kingdom of God. The Bible calls and describes our God as the glory and the lifter of our heads. Hallelujah. Psalm 3 verse 3 says, But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me, my glory and the lifter of mine head. It is evidently God's desire, God's utmost desire to lift men up. Somebody once said that Jesus came not to push men down. He came to lift men up. He came to promote. He came to lift. He came to add to man, not to subtract a man. He came to multiply to man, not to withdraw from man. He's a good, good God. He's a loving father. Uh, James 1 17 declares concerning him that every good gift and every perfect gift comes from your God in whom there is no shadow of turning nor variableness. David the songwriter the sweet psalmist declared in Psalm 34 verse 8, Oh taste and see that the Lord is good. The Bible again declares in Jeremiah 2 11 that the thoughts I think of you our thoughts of good to give you a hope and a future to bring you to an expected end. Your God is a good God. Psalm 84, 11 says, For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. He will give grace and glory. And no good thing will the Lord withhold from them that walk uprightly. So all through the scriptures you see that your God is a good God. He desires to lift you up. He desires to push you forward. As a matter of fact, he gives freely. He gives liberally. He gives generously. He gives exuberantly. Bible declares in Romans 8.32, He that spared not his son, Jesus Christ, 
how will he not with Jesus also give us all things freely? Uh, he gave you the best. He's willing to give you the rest. I'm just trying to remind you of the nature and the character of your God. He's a giver. He's a lifter. He's a promoter. The Bible talking about how generous and how liberal he is in Ephesians 3.20 says, Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we can ask, think, or imagine, according to the power that is our work in you. Your God is a God of exuberance. <laughs> Hallelujah. He wants your plate not just to be full, but your plate to be in the overflow. Hallelujah. He fed 5,000 men, not counting the women in crusades, which are more than men, than men and their children, possibly 15,000, 20,000 human beings. He, he fed them. Uh, miraculous were five loaves and two fish. Guess what? He said, gather the rest. Gather the rest. Why? When I feed, I, I want it to pour over your plate. There were 12 baskets remaining after multitudes were fed. That's your God. Hello, somebody. He is a God of the press down, shaken together and running over. That is your God. Luke 6, 38, you give, it shall be given unto you. What? Good measure. Press down, shaken together and what? Running over. So that's your God. Hallelujah. Declare with me, my father is a good, good father. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. This is the heart of God. It's the desire of God to see men lifted to see men promoted. He is so loving that he gave and gave and gave till he gave his own son. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world. Now, he shows the measure, the quantity, and the quality of his love so that he gave us his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him will not die, will not perish, but will have what? Everlasting life. That is the nature and the character of your God. Now, as we look at scripture, we see that God treats all men equally. Hmm. What do I mean? <laughs> the sinner and the saint, to some degree, receive the same kind of treatment from God. The Bible declares that he causes the same rain that falls upon the just to fall upon the unjust. The son that rests upon the born-again believer in Roger today is fallen upon the wicked, cruel man in anywhere in the world. Same rain, same son. Why? Your God loves equally. Your God is willing to give equally. He does not allow a different kind of son to rest upon you because you're born again. You speak in tongues. No, the same son, the same rain, the same atmosphere. We find in scripture that God is not a respecter of persons hallelujah what he said to one he said to another what he said to one he said to another what is willing to do for one he's willing to do for another hallelujah so in one dimension god expresses his goodness his kindness and his love to all mankind both the sinner and the just Acts 10 34 says, Then Peter opened his mouth and said of a truth, I, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. <laughs> but in every nation, he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. That's your God, not a respect of persons. John 10 34 begins to show us another dimension of God. Whilst he does not respect persons, he has utmost regard, utmost respect for his word, for his word, for his principles. They are unbreakable. John 10, 34 says, Jesus answered them, is it not written in your law? I said, you are gods. If he called them gods unto whom the word of God came and the scripture cannot be broken. The word cannot be broken. When it comes to that point, God has committed to respect in his word. Psalm 1382 says he has exalted his word above all his names. He wouldn't break his word. He's a covenant making God. He's a covenant keeping God. He's bound by choice to his word. Hallelujah to Jesus. So as we see, he doesn't respect persons. He has utmost regard for his word. Praise the Lord somebody. Praise the Lord somebody. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So, we establish two points in this short homily. Number one, God does not respect men 
in the sense that God doesn't treat people differently. Number two, God respects his word. He respects his principles. Now, by extension of these two things we've established, we can establish another one. Hear this. God has no respect for persons, but his principles, but his word. Hear this. It will also mean that by extension, any individual, oh boy, any person who will respect the word, keep the word, and do the word, will draw the attention of God. Is that right? Praise God. So any person who respects the word, keeps the word, commits to the word, does the word, will attract the attention of God. Hallelujah. 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 Now, this is what explains the difference in the dealings of God between two individuals. In the same church, in the same city, in the same community, on the same job. Somehow it looks like one person constantly is sharing testimonies of divine encounters. And you wonder why nothing seems to be happening in the life of the other person. You wonder, is God showing favoritism or he's showing advantage of one over the... Not, not quite so. It's more likely that one person is doing the word, respecting the word, and as such is gaining the attention of Almighty. God. Just like the law of gravity cannot be broken. What goes up comes down. Likewise, the principles of God, they cannot be broken. Shout a big amen. Shout a big amen. Anyone who tries to break them will ultimately be broken himself. Praise God. Now, we begin to understand that the kingdom of God operates by principles and by keys. By principles and by keys. In a discourse between Jesus, first and foremost with the disciples in Matthew 16, he said, who do men say that I am? They said, all kind of stuff. And then Simon Peter rose up to declare, hey, you are the son of the living God. He said, flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you, but my father in heaven. But he says something. He says, upon this word, upon this rock, will I build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail. But he says something. He said, I give unto you the keys. Of the kingdom of God. That whatever you lock shall be locked. Whatever you lose, lose it. So he made it clear that we have in our custody available to us keys of the kingdom. And those keys are principles. So me keys and principles. Now, the more you become acquainted with the dynamics and the operation of the various keys of the kingdom. Listen carefully. The more delightsome, the more pleasurable the more enjoyable your life will be in Christ. Hallelujah. 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 So I give unto you the keys of the kingdom. And those keys are called by extension mysteries. Matthew 13, 10 to 11 says, And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know what? The mysteries. Hello somebody. The mysteries, mysterion, of the kingdom of heaven. But to them it is not given. So, the keys of the kingdom, or the mystery of the kingdom, has been made available to the saints. Where is it found? In the word. The word is a container of keys, and a container of what? Mysteries. Now, we begin to see two dimensions of the Christ life. One is Christ, the person. Number two is Christ, his principles, the mysteries, uh, the keys. When we become born again, we encounter Christ. He, is, he called himself the way, the truth, and the life. Hallelujah. And that is what brings you into life, Christ, the life. Praise God. But as we come into the door of the kingdom, the Bible speaks about two, two aspects of the kingdom of God. Number one, to enter the kingdom. But as you study again, there is a dimension of seeing the kingdom and entering the kingdom. When you're born again, you see the kingdom. You begin to enter the kingdom. But as you begin to acquaint yourself, oh boy, with more understanding of the dynamics, the modus operandi, the principles of the kingdom, the more you enter into the kingdom and enjoy the various benefits of the kingdom. Healing is one of them. Prosperity is one of them. 
Hello, somebody. Sound mind, victory is one of them. They're all blessings. They're all a bouquet of blessings in the kingdom. But for you to access them, you need to know the keys. So it's possible to see the kingdom, to even enter to a measure, but not to enjoy all the blessings in the kingdom. Shout a big amen. That is the key of knowledge. Jesus said to the Pharisees, you have the keys of knowledge, but yet still you don't enter and you decline or refuse others from entering. So the keys has to do with knowledge. The more you know, the faster you run. Jesus said in John 8 31, if you continue in my word, you will know the truth. And the truth you know, Katia, will what? Make you free. So the revelation you are acquainted with will guarantee your freedom and your liberty. It's not just being born again. No, you must take time to know. Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. See, if you continue in my word, they were already, they already knew him. Hosea 4, 6 says, my people, not the devil's people, they are destroyed for lack of knowledge. What am I saying? Knowledge gives us keys that bring us to access to our inheritance in Christ. Shout, I've got the keys. I've got the mysteries. Hallelujah to Jesus. Praise God. How does God live in the kingdom? Now we see principles are involved, keys are involved. How does he lift? As far as liftings and promotion is concerned, there are at least two keys or two principles I want to address this morning. Because sometimes you could be in the faith for so long, uh, not getting the result you desire, all the New Year resolutions, New Year dreams and vision. You wonder, where is God? How is God? And God is not to blame. In the equation of life, God is always the constant and man is the variable. Praise God. If something is not working, it's not God. Check your, the man's side. Hallelujah to Jesus. So we want to examine what are the keys, just two of them, that guarantee lifting and promotion as far as working with God is concerned. Number one key, found clearly in scripture. God is committed to lifting only the humble. God is committed to lifting only the humble. James 4, 6 and James 4, 10. But he gives more grace, my God. Wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but God giveth grace unto the humble. Wow. He resists the proud, but gives grace unto the humble. Verse 10, James 4, 10. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. Glory to God. So we see there that when a man humbles himself under God's mighty hand, guess what? You are guaranteed of a lifting. So if you're not being lifted, ask yourself, are you really positioned for a lifting? Hiya. Humble yourself. Don't pray the prayer, God humble me. Hiya, hiya. So we are to humble ourselves under his mighty hand. For God to humble you is like Pharaoh. The humble is like Herod, like Nebuchadnezzar. You don't want that kind of humility. You humble yourself. Well, under his mighty hand and then he will lift you up. So if you want to be lifted, not by men, because when men lift, men will also pull you down. We read moments ago, promotion doesn't come from the east or the west or the south, but it comes from God. That God sets down one, he elevates another. You see, when you hear that, you almost think that God just comes into a church, mini, mini, mani, mo, brother Alex, whoa, lift him. It seems that way, not so. Were it to be so, then it would mean that we say that God is partial. No, sir. But when men understand the principles of lifting, they engage in the principle of lifting, they will naturally be lifted. Everything that rises falls is a law of gravity. Praise the Lord, somebody. So everybody can be lifted when you're rightly positioned. And we're saying here, number one is, you humble yourself under his mighty hand. He will lift you up. So you do your part, and God will do his part. Shout a big amen. amen. <laughs> First Peter 5, 5 and 6, Likewise, you younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. For God resisted the proud and giveth grace to the humble. Hear this, humble yourself. Again, it's our responsibility. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. So, principle number one of lifting is humility. Number two is really where I wish I had time to spend, maybe in another time, is God is committed to lifting and promoting the faithful steward. This, this needs time to unpack. 
Because I think it's here that many believers struggle quite a bit in the area of faithfulness versus unfaithfulness. But in God's kingdom, the way promotion occurs, the way lifting occurs is by being faithful. Wow. Over what God has committed to your trust. Oh, yeah. By being faithful. You can't circumvent this principle if you're going to be lifted. Not just lifted once, but lifted and lifted and lifted again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Proverbs 28, 20 says, A faithful man shall abound with blessings, but he that maketh haste to be rich shall not be innocent. A faithful man shall abound with blessings. If you like, shall abound with liftings. Hallelujah. So faithfulness over what God has committed to your trust will guarantee blessings, will guarantee liftings. And it seems that faithful men are somewhat far removed. And I want to believe in this house that they are faithful men indeed. Faithful to God, faithful to your assignment, but also faithful to this house where you know you've been divinely planted by God. Proverbs 20 verse 6 says, Most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness. Hey, but a faithful man who can find. This seems to infer or imply perhaps Faithful men may not be as easily found as possible. But I want you this Sunday morning to propose and determine in your mind, in your heart, that when God is looking for a faithful man or woman to live, you will be the one that is faithful. Shout a big amen. Let me say it again. When God comes looking on that job, in that office, in this local assembly, in that service team for a man or a woman to live, that you, you, you will be qualified as that faithful person to be lifted. Shout a big, big amen. He is committed to lifting and promoting the faithful. Hallelujah. Hey, there is a reward system of the kingdom. Remember, the kingdom of God is dialectically opposed to the kingdom of this world. In this world, men obtain greatness, obtain leadership uh, by, by fighting, pushing down, uh, uh, climbing upon each other, over each other. Uh, just like the two brothers, James and, and John, the sons of Zebedee, approached Jesus on a particular day. The mother said, hey, master, I have a request for you. Do me a favor. Uh, just like many want uh, to ask him. He said, I want in your kingdom for my boys. You know what I'm saying? Jenny Paul will be here and uh, Jimmy will be here on your right. He said, listen, uh, it's not for me to choose who is, is is kept uh, in the hands of my father. But he taught them and said, if anybody will be great, that means there's nothing wrong with the design greatness. The truth be told is everybody desires to be great. It's innate in man to grow, to become great. But, so the issue is not your desire. The issue is how you're going to become great. If anyone will be great, he must humble himself, take up the towel, wash the feet of the disciples, and serve the disciples or serve the brothers. Jesus said, I myself, I came to the world not to, to be served, but I came to serve others and to give my life as a ransom for many. Hey, the way to climb in the kingdom is not to go up, it's to go down. Oh, you didn't hear that. Listen, this is how it works as far as God's kingdom is concerned. The way up is down. The way to mastery is service. The way to true leadership is kingdom service. And God is sharing with us today that one principle, unbreakable, if you're going to be promoted, lifted, is determined to be faithful over the seemingly small that God has entrusted in your hand. I'll stop with this scripture and we'll pray. Luke 16, 10 to 12. He that is faithful. My God. Is it here? He that is what? Faithful. Come on, Roger. He that is what? Faithful. Ask your neighbor, are you really faithful? Maybe that's why you haven't quite uh, <laughs> been lifted, been promoted. So the key to lifting is promotion. So, it says, he that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. And he that is unjust in the least, my God, is unjust also in much. No, don't tell God, give me plenty of money, I'll be faithful. No, God gives you just enough to test your faithfulness, then he can add to you. If you're not faithful at level one, you will not be faithful at level two. He knows so. Praise the Lord, somebody. 
if therefore you have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, now he changes the reference point of faithfulness. Yeah. Uh, unrighteous mammon, who will come into your trust? The true riches. Oh boy. And you have, and if you've not been faithful in that which is another man, now the third category of faithfulness is faithfulness in another man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Who will give you what that which is your own? Saints, this is heaven's reward system. It looks so simple. It looks unassuming. But listen, you break it, you'll be broken. You break it, you go around circles for years and wonder, where is God? Is God partial over that? Is what? No, 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 no. Ask yourself, are you faithful? Where? Three areas. One over small. That means anything put in your trust, you must determine that you're going to be a profitable servant. Five naira. Whatever talent, whatever gift. Number two, he says, if you are not faithful over what the Bible calls unrighteous mammon. Now, that's really money. Uh -huh. now, 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 this will surprise you. How you handle money will recommend how you handle the anointing. It's strange, but it's true. How a pastor handles the ministry's money will determine also how much God can trust him, not just with money, but what the Bible calls true riches. That's anointing. For you to speak, God confirm that's true riches. That's more powerful than money. Oh, come on, okay, that the words of Samuel never fell to the ground, whether had money or not. That is true riches. But he said, if you're not faithful over the unrighteous mammon, uh, how can I trust you with something bigger? Like a preacher. He says, if you're not faithful at home to be a husband and a father, how can I trust you to be a leading judge? Likewise, we have to be faithful in money. And not just money, in the gift, the skill, the time. God gives us time, treasure, and talents. Number three, very important. He says, he who is not faithful in another man's. Oh, Lord, God, no, God, God. Now, you're called to work in that company. It is an opportunity. Not just to receive salary, but to begin to prepare yourself for whatever, however, it will please God to give you your own. Ah, can I help you out? What you sow is what you reap. But listen, where you sow is not necessarily where you're going to reap. Is that okay? But what you sow, the quality of your seed in that service team, in that local assembly, in that company, listen, you're paving a way in your future. The same kind of seed you sowed there, you are going to reap there. So run from here to there, the quality of seed you sowed there, you are going to reap where you're going to. Praise the Lord somebody. So faithfulness, is one key for the divine liftings and promotion rise on your feet. Let's give the Lord thanks. Can you ask for grace this morning to be faithful? Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Ah, you're now wondering, why does it look like God favors brother A more than C? This could be a key and a clue. Ah, is somebody praying? Is somebody praying? Please pray. Rise on your feet, everybody. Oh, say, give up. Open your heart. Oh, Lord, grant me grace to be found faithful. This is our healing and restoration service. Ask the Lord once again to steer the pool of healings, uh, uh, miracles, and uh, revival in our midst this morning. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Father, thank you for the open heavens we're enjoying already. Oh, Magida, so pregnant. Father, thank you for the open heavens. Let angels rise yet again, ascend and descend over this meeting. We receive miracles, receive healings for your people. We lift our hearts and our voice to praise you, to worship you, to give you the glory that is due your name. We receive grace to be found faithful today. In Jesus' wondrous name, we pray. Somebody who is glad to be in church, clap those hands. Come on, come on. We believe that you have been tremendously blessed by the ministry of Apostle Goodhart Obi Ekweme. It is our conviction that this message has begun a mighty work in your life, and we pray that the grace for prompt obedience to the Word of God will rest upon you. We look forward to hear and celebrate your testimonies with great expectations.